Welcome, friends. We're going to meditate in this one a little bit on the definition of an accumulation point in topology. So let A be a subset of R. Let's stop. Everything says something. So mark a number line and basically call this your R, the real number line. Then it says A is a subset of R. So in that case, I'm going to put the following down. I'm going to put a set of, say, parentheses to represent a subset of R right there. That's a subset of R. And then after that, it says a point P belonging to R is an accumulation point or limit point of A. So put a P somewhere. Now the issue is often points are represented as dots, but remember that a point, in fact, when we learn in geometry, it doesn't really have any size. So for that reason, I'm just going to use this thin line segment. That's P somewhere in there for now, okay? P belongs to R in our case. It's an accumulation point, a limit point of A, if and only if every open set G containing P contains a point of A different from P. Well, where might we have G in this context? Add a set of, for now, parentheses and just put them within A right here. This is your set G. As you can see, G contains P, but G also contains elements different from P. This is what I mean. Draw, for example, a line like this. And then we'll call this Q. That's a point, if you look at it very carefully, that is different from P, but it belongs to A. Remember that in this context, A is this bigger set right here. Let me kind of indicate it with a brace, okay? This is A. The smaller set that you see on the screen, this for now is G. So if you look at it very carefully, does the picture that I've just constructed satisfy the definition? Well. A is a subset of R, and then a point P belonging to R, that belongs to R because it's in the number line P there, as an accumulation point, a limit point of A, if and only if every open set G. Now that every open set G, that's very hard to show because it's talking about every open set G. I've drawn just one specific example of G. Now I just have to imagine that it doesn't matter how the G is basically made because it says every open set. G containing P contains a point of A different from P. So it's true in the picture because you see in this particular case like G is even a subset of A, A is a subset of R, and P is a member of G. But this set G also contains Q, which is different from P but belongs to A as an example. So this is an illustration of what this is saying. However, is it an exhaustive illustration? Not really, because you see, what you really should have to do at least at least once or twice is make like a smaller version of G right here. Notice that this smaller version of G, this new G, we'll call it G prime right here. There you are, that's G prime, say. It also contains P, and again, it also contains, say, this point right here. We'll call this one point R. So if you look at this picture, G prime contains P. However, as you can see, it also contains R. R belongs to A, but R is not P. So that's what this definition is saying thus far. Let's illustrate this with another example that's a little bit more famous, perhaps. Again, draw a number line here. And then let's define the following set. So A is equal to the following set. It says 1, comma, and then it says 1 half, and then it says comma, and then it says 1 over 3, comma, and then it says here 1 over 4, comma, and then dot, dot, dot. Notice the following in this case. Zero is an accumulation point, but zero doesn't belong to A. And actually, now let's illustrate this. So choose zero in this position. Choose one for now, and then look at the structure of the set. It goes one, one half, one third, one fourth. So put, say, one half in this position, and then put one fourth in this position right here. So one fourth, and then put, say, one third somewhere in the middle between them like this. Now notice that the set has ellipses here. So it says dot, dot, dot. That means that this is not enough. These are just a few sample values out of infinitely many values. Keep that in mind. All right, let's rearrange these. And then here, well, you said I meant to put zero in this position. Again, I'm gonna indicate zero with a thin line so we can get very close to it. Look very carefully right there. That's zero on the number line. And remember that for zero to be an accumulation point, Look at the definition, right? It says, if and only if every open set G containing P contains a point of A different from P. Every open set. So specifically, imagine for now, I just erect this open set around zero right here. If I continue the pattern of one, one half, one third, one fourth, one fifth, one sixth, one seventh, one eighth, one ninth, one tenth. In other words, it's a number that's getting ever smaller. I could get as close as I want pretty much to zero right here, you see? And that there, 
Let me make that red so we can distinguish. That red line would represent an element belonging to a different from zero. It's not equal to zero, as you can see. So for now, for the sake of labeling things, let's call this Q right here. But then imagine, because it's talking about every open set G, I'm going to also say the following. Make it smaller. You have to really imagine that that open set shrinks around zero, and that open set just becomes really, 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 really tiny. That's hard to show graphically, but you can suggest the process a little bit, you see? It looks like this. Well, in this case, this one still happens to contain Q. Make it smaller still, and just place that around zero. You see this? Now, that one doesn't contain Q. We've gone past Q. However, we can then just identify a new point that still belongs. This is what I mean, look. Okay, you see how now that one, you have to be very careful. Look at it very carefully, you see? I'm going to make that line blue there. That blue line, it belongs to the smallest of the ones that I've drawn, open sets G, but it's still different from zero. You see, so just call it R for the sake of labeling things. So what is this showing us? It's showing us the following, that zero, first of all, is not an element of A, because if you look at these values of the form 1, 1 over 1 half, 1 over third, 1 over 4, in other words, it's 1 over n. Well, when n is 0, 1 over 0 is not a defined quantity. So first of all, 0 is not in the set. However, regardless of how tiny a set you construct around 0, an open set, then, for example, to the right of 0, there will be elements that belong to A. Now just imagine the picture that you see, and imagine that set that you've erected around 0 shrinking and becoming basically like infinitesimal in size. It doesn't matter, there would still be some value that you could find, well, to the right of 0 that belongs to the set A. It's kind of interesting if you think about it. So these are some of the things that happen with open sets, and also what an accumulation point is. Thank you. If it's been helpful, friends, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll see you in another video.